When OBO? Will you ever learn full OBO? I don't know what OBO is. Also, OBO? Learn, learn, learn full OBO? You learn, 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 hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'll be learning OBO. So what is OBO? OBO stands for orientation of both layers, and it's a step in solving the square one. Usually after solving cube shape, most square one solvers solve CO or corner orientation, then EO or edge orientation. Corner orientation is pretty intuitive, and edge orientation only has 7 algorithms, which are all pretty easy. However, it's two steps which is pretty slow and inefficient. The better method, OBL, combines these two steps into one, by solving orientation in one step. So it's kind of like full all out on 3x3, but there's a problem. Actually, 186 problems. That's how many cases there are. But the number might be deceiving. There's a lot of mirrors which can cut the cases in half, and there's also a lot of easy cases that I already know, like EO algorithms. So while there's still a lot, it's not really that bad. So I'm going to try to learn all of these algorithms in one day. And I'll consider it a success if I get a sub-15 OBO average by the end of the day. But first, I need a plan. And for that, I need to understand how OBO works. So how does this method work? Well, let's work backwards. If you do one move on a solve square one, then that would be the first OBO, the one slicer. After you learn that case, you can do one more move. There's a lot of different moves you can do, but all of these moves gives a different case which each is two slices away from being solved. Then we could do one more move for the three slicers, and then four. And what we end up with is some sort of tree, where different cases go to other cases. To solve any OBO, all we need to do is follow the tree from one case to a better case, and on and on until we're solved. So we can memorize an algorithm for each case, but what we can also do is learn the one move that connects one case to another. That way, by following the tree, we'll eventually find our way back to solved. So I mentioned a lot of cases, so what do they look like? Well, there's two squares, the top side and the bottom side. And the way we name each case is by naming each of the squares. And how do we name the squares? By what they look like. For example, this is a knight, and here's an axe, and here's a squid, and this is Yoshi. Uh, yeah, not sure about that one, but you get the idea. Now that we know how OBO works, let's get started. The first thing I had to do is learn all the names of each case so I can identify each OBO case. This was pretty easy and it just took the few minutes of scrolling through the document. Next, it was time to learn each OBO. I used Oxowatchi's video tutorials and they were really helpful in my OBO journey. So I started with the one slicers. Wow, very hard. Then onto the two slicers. I already knew all of them because they're all just two moves which is pretty easy but the hardest one is this one, thumb thumb. So here's good thumb thumb, you know it's good if both of them are going in the same direction. You hold one of the thumbs like this, regular, and then flip one of the thumbs upside down, like this. Then all I have to do is keep this thumb on the top layer, but for these fingers, bring it to the bottom layer, something like this. And then, one more slice and you're done. Pretty easy OBO. Now, onto the three slicers. This is where the real fun begins. Even though there weren't many of them, and they're not that long, a lot of them are still pretty hard to learn. To help, I actually use a similar technique used for blindfolded solving. Our brains naturally aren't that great at memorizing random letters and numbers, but we're pretty good with images and stories. That's why in blindfolded solving, we usually convert the cube into a story. I tried doing something similar for each of these algorithms, converting each side into a picture and then making some interactive story that would do the algorithm at the same time. For example, this is Knight Axe. So my story for this OBO is pretty simple. The knight looks away for one second, then the axe comes from behind and hits him in the back of his head. Pretty simple story. So here's how to act out the story. First off, here's the knight. He looks away for just one second. And then here's the axe that's gonna attack the knight. He'll come from behind the knight over here and hit him in the head. And then we have one more slice. Here's another one, Yoshi bird. The story's also pretty simple. Yoshi has this gem and he throws this gem at the bird. Then the bird tries to fly away. So here's Yoshi's gem and here's the bird. A bit broken up. So Yoshi's gonna throw his gem at the bird, and then the bird's gonna try to run away to the side. And then one more slice. With these techniques, I continued watching Ox's tutorials and took notes on each case on a separate document. When I was done, it was training time. To help train, I used an excellent website by Gil Zussman called Cuborama. It has all the cases for OBO and a timer, and if I ever forget an AUG, it's very useful to just click one button and it'll show me how to solve it. I would definitely recommend this trainer if you're learning any algorithms, whether it's cube shape, OBL, or ZBLO. Once I got them all, we're on to the hardest part, the four slicers. Around half of OBLs are from this group, and now the algs are getting longer and harder. 
and the video tutorial was 30 minutes long, which was double the length of the video for the three slicers. To make it manageable, I had to break it up into three parts. Then I used the same strategy. First watch the video and take notes, usually containing some images or a story, and then just drilling those cases online. I had to also study my notes for a really long time and just refer back to them, just because of how many cases there were. While this is definitely the hardest part, there were some pretty fun algorithms. Here's one of them, Gem Knight. In this story, someone throws this gem at the knight's head, then the knight's head falls off. Kinda sucks how this knight is getting bullied by everyone. So here's the execution, the gem hits the head of the knight, and then the knight's head is gonna fall off to the other side of the slice. And then the rest should be pretty obvious. So you remember how this knight always gets bullied all the time? Well in this story he gets his revenge. This time the squid tries to attack him, but when the squid tries to attack the knight, the knight is too strong, so the squid's head is actually gonna fall off. So first the squid head's gonna attack the knight head, and then he fails, so the head moves over and falls off, and then the rest is obvious. After these algorithms, my brain was fried, so I wanted to take a square one break. But I obviously couldn't do it without trying OBO on some of these solves. So, I did my first ever solves with OBO. Sub 15. Almost up 10. And my first average phobia, 32. I guess it's not that bad. Next was the 5 slicers. There were much less of them, but I thought it would be pretty hard because the algorithms were getting pretty long. However, it actually wasn't that bad. The video was actually shorter than the 3 slice video. Many of the algs I already knew, like the EO cases, and many were just the corner versions of those algs, which also weren't that bad. There were also some cases that I found really cool. So here's a cool case that's 5 slices long. All I have to do is align the N and make the T the same alignment. And then you just do JJ, which is pretty much one of the most basic beginner algorithms. You do that algorithm on this OBL. Then you just get one move. Pretty cool case. And there are actually a couple of these. After that, it was drilling time to help my recognition for each case. And you'll notice again that I had to look at my cheat sheet quite a few times, but my recognition was getting better. Lastly, there's also 6 slicers. At this point, I knew that doing CO and EO is pretty much optimal for these cases, and I was also running out of time for the day. So I just decided to do CO EO for these ones. Finally, I went back and practiced all the OBLs. But after that, it was finally time to do some actual OBL solves. But it all came down to the final test. Could I get a sub-15 average? Sadly, I couldn't. It was already pretty late in the day and I was a bit overwhelmed. So, I guess I failed. But I was able to still learn a lot and got a lot of progress done. Thanks for watching this video. Now, you might be wondering, will I be switching to full OBO from now on? Well, we'll see.